Hey guys, I'm Julia. I'm here at NAM 2020 and next to me there's a beautiful Jeff Bullion. Thank you so much for taking some time with us. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? I'm, I've never been better. Uh, I am in uh, finishing up my, my record, Jack Bruce. Yeah. It's been ongoing for a long time, but we're getting close to winding that up. Uh, I've been playing very well for a guy of advancing years. Um, my ideas are even more free. Uh, I'm touring, I'm playing. I have a tour coming up uh, to play the Jack music, and I have a, a lesson tour that I'm going to be doing. Oh, so, wow. where is it? Well, it'll be international. It'll be in Germany and France and Holland and Belgium and Indonesia and Japan. I'm going to be in different spots where bass players who wish to learn how to play better yeah. will. I'm charging for this. They'll pay a small fee and they'll spend the day with me where I'll try to teach them what to do that will help them to play better and suggest ways to not follow certain popular methods yeah. that really don't help people to play better. So yeah. that's my plans and I feel great. What would you tell people who want to start playing the bass? With what exercise or with what are you going to start? There's two ways to learn how to play the bass, only. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> you want to know what they are? Oh, yes. One is being self-taught, autodidactic, yeah. which means that a person is in charge completely of what they decide that they want to do in order to play. Yeah. I could come up and show them this, and they could use it or not, because they're not paying me. Yeah. So autodidactic is being completely in charge of everything you listen, everything you play, everything yeah. you do, every amp, yeah. every pedal. The other way that's been proven to work is learning how to read music, because reading music tells us where to put our fingers on the bass and why. And these are examples of ways to play notes that are not familiar to a lot of people because they associate what they practice with what they gig, but they don't relate. Yeah. There's a real big problem in bass playing in the bass world. Am I interrupting? Uh, yeah, no, no, no. That's, that's okay. Yeah. But the problem is, is that people confuse performance and learning, and they're different. They're completely different. They're absolutely different. Yeah. They are not to be approached the same way. Yeah. That's why a lot of bass players have difficulty, and I can help them with that. You're from Germany, yes? Yes. The only way, the only way I can speak German is if I learn the words. Yeah. There is no other way to do it. The only way that we will ever play the bass is to learn the notes. There is no other way to do it. Yeah. And when bass players understand this, I can show them how you don't replace anything autodidactic, you add to your day. 15 minutes, 30 minutes of reading yeah. that gets us to put our fingers correctly on a bass. Yeah, yeah. It's a life-changing concept and bass players don't know it. And when it comes to soloing, yes. when you play a solo, yes. how do you think, um, or I mean, there are different approaches to soloing. Sure there are. And what is your approach um, of soloing? Of Harmonically soloing? and rhythmically. So, I, that's really logical, you know exactly what you're doing when you play over a chord, for example. Mostly um, because I've done it for so long. Yeah. So when I solo at, at any particular time, I'm relying on my history. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning I wasn't soloing so well, <laughs> but I practiced and listened and transcribed and got better yeah. and better and played with top players. And now when I solo, I find it very easy yeah. to where now even the tone is changing in my bass playing. Uh, it's a maturing of the, it's the same words. When you are speaking to me in English, yeah. you're improvising. Oh yes. <laughs> You're improvising. So tell me, Jeff. So what? Are, there's many ways to solo. So how do I? What's your way? You you may you improvise this thought. Yeah. And you know why? Because you know the words, okay. in English. Yeah, yeah, okay. It really is that simple. Okay. So in, in this case, my soloing is always contingent on the words that I know. C major.
no C minor. Now, it's the words that I know. When somebody says I have a song with this feel and this beat, and in these changes, these chords, rock or blues, I feel that I'm comfortable because I learned the words early. Yeah. And that's why I want everyone to learn the words. Most of the time, they're not on this position. Like, they're not like that far away. Correct. So why did you choose that, or why is it? I really chose this, and I think they put this here, because I'm not, I don't use this pickup very much. Oh, so you're just on the, on the Just on the bridge. bridge and the reason the is, is because when I go on the bridge pickup, the note is so fat. Yeah, I know, I know. I love it too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And what this allows, if I want more bottom, I go to my amp and I provide more bottom. Okay. Excuse me, if I want more highs, I turn up my bass and I add more highs. This is a 15-inch speaker cabinet yeah. built by Mark Bass. I use simple gear, but I use this pickup on the chord bass because it provides a tone that's round. It goes bong. It doesn't go, oh, yeah. that's, okay. oh. and I don't like, oh, oh, oh. I like. Also, the attack is different. I, I, I absolutely play. agree. I would play rock on a bridge pickup because I could then get a pedal, yeah. distortion, yeah. get overdrive, get octave, get boost the bass, boost the mid, something, I don't know. And you're gonna get a bass tone that's like coming at you like 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 uh, Godzilla coming out of out yeah. of the water, rah, you know. And still, you'll hear. That's why I love the court rhythmic. Yeah. I'm nuts about it. And what is on your bass pedal when you say like octave? I'm just suggesting. I only use a chorus pedal, okay. an EBS oh. chorus pedal. Okay. Very fond of the sound. Very yeah, fond yeah. of the sound. And I use that coupled with a Babix bass bridge. All these basses have it. Bartolini's ebony bass neck, uh, uh, frets, passive. I, I mean, I think, and I've said this before. I believe that this bass is as great or better than the 1962 Fender Jazz bass. Okay. which is an iconic bass yeah, to bass players. It's a collector's item, it is highly prized, but I don't think it sounds quite as good because as this bass, nor feels as good as this bass, okay. because this bass is built on the shoulders of what the 62 Fender Jazz bass was about. I have to test that at some point. Well, you gotta get the neck straightened and you gotta adjust it a little. I, I adjusted this, this yeah. came off the wall so for do the you have show. A, a low action? Do I you? do. Yeah. Are you a bass player? Yeah. You are? Yeah. Give me the mic. Hello, everybody. I'm the new host of your show. My name is Jeff Berlin. Ich bin ein Berliner. Oh, so low. Never, right? This is crazy. Every note rings. Every note wow. rings. That's it's what I wanted. get the bass back. Wow. She loves it. That's it. The, in, the interview is over. It's like, you want to ask me any more questions? No, leave me alone. I want to play. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you and Thank you <laughs> it was a pleasure. I think I'm going to get the bass back. Wow. She 